Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion this morning is entitled, Fear and Its Absurdity, and our scripture is 2 Timothy chapter 1. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. In the late 1930s, Elwood met Cecilia, the older sister of his best friend Marlin, with whom he played baseball. Seal didn't like Elwood at all. She wouldn't give that tall drink of water a spare second of time in her mind. Seal had her sights set on following in Lottie Moon's footsteps. Lottie was a Southern Baptist missionary who labored 40 years in China in the latter part of the 19th century. But God had other plans for Cecilia Emily Sophia Schmidt. Her dad, Emil, turned thumbs down on his daughter traveling to Chicago to attend Moody Bible Institute. Instead, because of the Great Depression, she would stay home in New York and work as a secretary to help support the family. Seal never counted on Slim's dogged perseverance. The twenty-something skinny giant from across town who loved baseball and football was undaunted by the cold shoulder treatment. They were married in September of 1943, the beginning of 66 years together. Elwood, my dad, told me about courting Seal. He would walk home the same route every day when he visited her. His shortcut took him through the local cemetery. One evening, just after dusk, the place was spookier than usual. It was so quiet and eerie, his heart was pounding like a jackhammer. About halfway through the graveyard, a man suddenly stepped out from behind a tombstone. Well, Dad swears his feet never touched the top of that six-foot brick wall that enclosed the cemetery. He made the three miles home in 30 seconds. It's truly amazing, isn't it, what you can do when you are motivated to keep your eye on the goal. Scripture records how Timothy faced his demons like you and I must face ours. Timothy was the Apostle Paul's protege. He was a very young man, and Paul took time to strengthen this timid fledgling of a pastor. It's not hard to figure out that the older folks in Tim's church made him a little nervous. Paul told him not to let that get in the way of being a good example to the flock. Everyone needs a Paul. I had Pat. Pat Giffen was a mentor to me when I was a new pastor. Pat was blessed with the kind of wisdom and pastoral gifts you cannot learn in seminary. I knew Pat only for the four last years of his life. He was operating on less than half of his heart's abilities. Yet with death's shadow dogging him, Pat was a man full of life and joy. Our Monday conversations were laced with his laughter and corny jokes. Pat never told me I needed a sense of humor to be a pastor, although he did tell me Mondays would always require learning a new joke. I guess that would be to counter the effects of spiritual attack most pastors encounter after preaching. Well, Pat never offered unasked for advice, but he was ready to help you find your fears and face them. In the end, he did that for me when he left instructions with his bride, Martha, that I preach his funeral service. We had Pat's service in the little church that he pastored, and it was packed. There were as many standing outside as seated and standing inside. At the end of the service, I led the procession around the small pond next to the church as we carried Pat to the cemetery. When everyone was in place, I began to read the final scriptures, and that's when it happened. The lightning flashed, thunder crashed, and a torrential Florida afternoon, frog-strangling rain shortened the graveside to 30 seconds. As everyone scurried to the fellowship hall, I could have sworn on ten Bibles I heard Pat's Monday afternoon laughter in that thunder. I truly laughed out loud as I ran for shelter. In that moment, I knew Pat had made his point. If God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, there's only one other choice. For you today... Old Testament prophet Samuel shared some keen insight on the absurdity of choosing fear over what God has designed for us in his address to the nation of Israel when Saul was installed as the nation's first king. Samuel said this, 
And now behold the king whom you have chosen, for whom you have asked. Behold, the Lord has set a king over you. If you will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, and if both you and the king who reigns over you will follow the Lord your God, it will be well. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.